Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Another game from the Battle of the Legends, Gary Kasparov, former world champion, arguably the best player ever in the history of the game is white, and Nigel Short, world championship challenger. It's a hell of a game. Uh, I'm going to get to it because it's a long game, but I got to tell you, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, up to the very last move of the game. Let's get to it. Kasparov is white. Short is black. We're going to go through the opening a little quick. So Queen's and Gambit. Pawn takes. Queen. E3. E5. Now, I'm not familiar with this kind of setup in the Queen's Gambit, but Knight C3. Bishop B4. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Queen d6. Now, according to the computer off screen, that's the last book move. Rook b1, rook g1. Nigel decides to go to, or I should say Kasparov, excuse me, decides to go queen to b1. Interesting little twist. Castle's long, f4. Nigel's just, e takes. Queen checks. King b8, queen takes. Didn't want to screw up his pawns. But look at that center for Gary. It's uh, interesting. But believe it or not, even though white has the bishop pair against two knights, black has no bishop at all, it's a minute advantage for black, we'll call it even. Give me an idea. Queen takes really lead, doesn't lead to much because after knight f6, queen b3, rook, e takes, rook checks, bishop Knight d5, and black's up almost two points. After queen takes, going to go through this a little quick. E takes, knight, f3. Now, granted, those pawns are pretty ugly on Kasparov's king side, but no queens on the board. He's okay. He's got all the center pawns. Knight d5, starting to go after him. King f2. Knight to b6. Go we'll through this a little quick. Like I said, it's a long game. And when you can't defend them and they're at a pain in the neck, you just push them. Knight, bishop, c5, bishop, pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes, bishop c3. Now here we are. Tiny advantage for white, third of a pawn. He's got the bishops. See how Gary does with them. Rook a4. Bishop takes. Rook e8. He's getting his rooks in the game. Nigel is. And look so far, Kasparov, his rook on a1 has got to babysit that pawn. Rook over. Knight to c6. Like I said, I'm going through this a little quick. It's a long game. Rook d6. Knight c4. Okay. This is a hell of a lot more complicated than it looks. And you've got double knights, double bishops. Just remember, this is blitz. So these guys got to figure out these knight moves, and oh, it can get crazy. Rook takes. Gary decides to sack the exchange. But Nigel, of course, sees that. He wants no part of that because what will happen is if pawn takes. Bishop takes. Gary wins a rook. So rook takes. Give you an idea, show you what it looks like. After bishop takes rook a5, bishop takes e8, and of course the game is over. After rook takes, f takes, b takes, now it's much different. The bishop is gone. Rook to d1. Sacrificing the pawn. King f3. Rook king to c7. Now let's just stop and take a look. Even though it's a long game, we'll pause for a little bit. Small advantage for black. Nigel is holding his own on this one. But one thing about black, his pawns are a mess. Four isolated pawns. Granted, two on the queen side are passed. e5. Rook d2. Trying to trade. Gary wants no part of it. Knight to b6 for Nigel, then rook to a1. King has to come over to save that pawn. 
H4. Gary sees he might have a pass pawn. That E pawn is going to end up being passed. C5. Right now, according to the computer, it is dead even. When I say dead even, 0.00. .00. I think Nigel's done well, considering he's had a really difficult time. The only game he's won so far is on time. That game I didn't show. E6 for Kasparov. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Got a new pass pawn now. What's he going to do with it? Rook to D8. Got to stop the pawn. Luckily, it's not a light-colored square, the queening square, so the dark-squared bishop can't help out too much. King. Rook E8. King comes up. Got to protect your, your only pass pawn. It's your prize possession on the board. A5. So Nigel decides I'm going to start pushing my pawns up slowly. Rook to D1. He's looking to get in. King C6. King F6. Here he comes. Knight checks. King comes back. Knight E3. Wow, wow, wow. Tough end game. Rook comes up, check. King has to go to b5. Rook d7. Looks like white's in the driver's seat, but still shows 0.00. .00. a4 decides to push the pawn. Maybe he should have went instead. Maybe knight c4 checks, king c6, but I'm splitting hairs here. Short goes a4, and then e7. Here comes the pawn. King c6. King's a powerful piece in the end game. Don't forget that. King e6. Not f5. Trying to deflect the king away. Of course, the king can't take. Because then the king takes the rook. Bishop. Decides to sacrifice the knight. And after bishop takes rook a8, he thinks that pawn. Now, it's less than a pawn advantage for white now. Can Nigel hold this? Rook checks. King b5. Rook comes up. Now he's going after the c pawn. What's Nigel going to do here? He's got to protect it. Rook. Now this is where I think Nigel goes awry a little bit. King c4, rook c6 check are the two choices on the computer. He goes rook a8, and it makes perfect sense, but an accurate move. But now it's about a point and a half advantage for white. Give you an idea if he went king to c4, or rook to f3, and I think black can hold it. But after rook to a8, it's rook to c3. Now he's going after the pawn again. So if you can't defend it, push it. King to f7. Now he's going after black's h pawn. Even though it's two pawns for a piece, black can still draw this. Rook a7, h5, rook to d7, h6. And this is where I think he goes awry. Rook takes e7 check is the computer's choice. Because after rook takes e7, king takes king b4. And it's dead drawn according to the computer. So what will happen is eventually White will get this pawn. It'll have to sacrifice his rook for this pawn. This pawn will queen and this pawn will queen. And it'll be a draw. But instead he went rook to d3. Of course he wants no part of that rook to c1. And this is where Nigel misses again. Remember this is blitz around move 53. a3. Now it's a two-point advantage almost for white. King g8, now he's going after the pawn. a2. Bishop f6, guarding the queening square. c3, blocking the bishop. It's a three-point advantage now for white. King takes. King c4. It's over. King g8. Rook to g3, check. Bishop g7. 
King F7 was the choice of the computer. Bishop blocking was kind of an inaccuracy. After King F7, Rook H3, King G6, and the game is over. So Kasparov missed that. King to B3. Now, believe it or not, Black can still draw this, even after H7. King to B2. Rook to H1. All three moves are drawn. Uh, White promotes. Rook takes G7 check. Or Rook takes G7 now, and that's what Nigel does. King takes. Now, this is the point in the video where I want to pause. Pause the video. You're black. It's your move. You've played a back-and-forth game. It's been really frenzied. You're now on move 61 in a blitz game against Gary Kasparov. You've been lost two or three times, but you've managed to battle your way back. What is your move here? Stop the video. Take a look. What do you think black should do? And what Nigel does, he miscues and plays. The game right now is dead drawn. He plays C2. And just like that, the game is over. Give you an idea if he had a queen to A pawn instead. After rook takes, king takes, the game is drawn. White will promote. Black will promote. Or will keep checking him. There's no way he can stop it. It's a draw. But he goes... Queen or goes C2 instead. Now, white queens, black queens, and now when he moves his king, it's check. And the game is over. Queen, rook checks, king B3, queen takes, and he resigns, of course. Because after king takes, rook takes, and that's it. What a heartbreaker for Nigel. Heartbreaker. The only game he's won so far Nigel has is when Gary lost on time. A game I didn't show. Let's go back to that again, because I think it's worth looking at. Black to move. And we've all done this. I'm about a 15, 1600 player rated USCF. And it's blitz. It's blitz. And that simple mistake goes from a draw to a loss. I've been there. I've been on the giving end. I've been on the receiving end. And I'll tell you, it's a heartbreaker. Because later, if you didn't realize it right then, you will later. So there it is, folks. It's a hell of a game. Back and forth. Most accurate game in the world? No. But it's blitz. And I'll tell you what, these guys are a hell of a lot more accurate than we are. And i got to take my hat off to both of them. A hard-fought game, heartbreaker for Nigel. There it is, the game from Round 5, Battle of the Legends being played at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center in St. Louis. Probably one of the nicest chess club, if not the nicest chess club in the world. The Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis has their own YouTube channel. So if you wanted to see... The whole day's worth of video, you can. They played it on two different days. Day one was a rapid game, 25 minutes, and four blitz games. I believe they were five minutes each. I think there was a three-second increment. I'm not sure. And the next day was the same format, one rapid game, four blitz. This is game five. So this is the last game of day one. And poor Nigel, what are you going to do? Anyway, folks, I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And I also want to thank you very, very, very much to all my new subscribers. I've gotten quite a few in the last few months, and I personally appreciate it. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.